Hello, my Jicklets. Thank you for stopping by. Spring is finally beginning to bloom where I'm at, so I do hope that the rest of y'all are starting to get slightly warmer weather. Let's hope it doesn't get too crazy this year. As always, make sure to check out those links in the description for everything important. Let me go ahead and read for you The Quarrel of the Cat and the Dog by Gertrude Landa. In the childhood of the world, when Adam named all the animals and ruled over them, the dog and the cat were the greatest good friends. They were inseparable chums in their recreations, faithful partners in their transactions, and devoted comrades in all their adventures, their pleasures and their sorrows. They lived together, shared each other's food, and confided their secrets to none but themselves. It seemed that no possible difference would ever arise to cause trouble between them. Then winter came. It was a new experience to them, to feel the cold wind cutting through their skins and making them shiver. The dismal prospect of their leafless trees and the hard cold ground weighed heavily upon their hearts, and worse still, there was less food. The scarcity grew serious, and hunger plunged them into unhappiness and despair. The dog became melancholy, while the cat grew peevish, then petulant, and finally developed a horrid temper. We can't go on like this, moaned the cat. I think we had better dissolve partnership. We can't find enough to share when we are together, but separately we ought each to discover sufficient forage in our hunting. I think I can help you, because I am stronger, said the dog. The cat did not contradict, but she thought the dog a bit of a fool, and too good-natured. She knew herself to be sly, and intended to rely on that quality for her future sustenance. The dog was deeply hurt at the cat's desire to end their happy compact, but he said quietly, Of course, if you insist on parting, I will agree. It is agreed then, purred the cat. Where will you go? asked the dog. To the house of Adam, promptly replied the cat, who had evidently made up her mind. There are mice there. Adam will be grateful if I clear them away. I shall have food to eat. Very well, assented the dog. I will wander further ahead. Then the cat said solemnly, We must each take an oath never to cross the other's path. That is the proper way to terminate a business arrangement. The serpent said so, and he is the wisest of all animals. They put their right four paws together and gravely repeated an oath never to interfere with each other by going to the same place. Then they parted. The dog trotted off sorrowfully with his head hanging down. Once he looked back, but the cat did not do so. She scampered off as fast as she could to the house of Adam. Father Adam, she cried, I have come to be your servant. You are troubled with mice in the house. I can rid you of them, and I want nothing else for my services. Thou art welcome, said Father Adam, stroking the cat's warm fur. The cat rubbed her head against his feet, purred contentedly, and ran off to look for mice. She found plenty, and soon grew fat and comfortable. Adam treated her kindly, and she soon all forgot about her comrade. The poor dog did not fare so well. Indeed, he had a rough time. He wandered aimlessly about over the frozen ground and could not find the slightest scrap of food. After three days, weary, paw-sore, and desperate, he came to a wolf's lair and begged for shelter. The wolf took pity on him, gave him some scraps of food, and permitted him to sleep in the lair. The dog was most thankful, and sleeping with his ears on alert, he heard stealthy footsteps in the night. He told the wolf, "'Drive the intruders away,' said his host in a surly tone. The dog went out obediently to do so, but the marauders were wild animals, and they nearly killed him. He was lucky to escape with his life. After bathing his wounds at a pool in the early morning, he wandered all day long, but again could find nothing. Toward night, when he could scarcely drag his famished and wounded body along, he saw a monkey in a tree. "'Kind monkey,' he pleaded, "'give me shelter for the night. I am exhausted and starving.' "'Go away, go away, go away,' chittered the monkey, jumping and swinging swiftly from branch to branch, moving his lips quickly and opening and shutting his eyes comically. The dog hesitated, and two frightened him away. The monkey pulled coconuts from the tree 
and pelted him. The poor dog crawled miserably away. What shall I do? he moaned, hearing the bleeding of some sheep. He made his way to them and asked them to take compassion on him. We will, they replied, if you will keep watch over us and tell us when the wolf comes. The dog agreed willingly, and, after he had devoured some food, he stretched himself to sleep like a faithful watchdog with one eye open. In the middle of the night, he heard the wolves approaching, and anxious to serve the sheep who had treated him kindly, he sprang to his feet and began to bark loudly. This aroused the sheep, who woke and started to run in all directions. Some of them ran right into the pack of wolves and were killed and eaten. The poor dog was nearly heartbroken. "'It is my fault, my fault,' he wailed. "'I barked too soon. Oh, what an unhappy creature I am. I shall keep away from all animals now.' Once again, he set off on his travels. Wherever he met an animal, he ran off in the opposite direction. He had to make his journey by the loneliest paths and the most unfrequented routes, and the difficulty of finding food grew steadily greater. At last, he grew so weak and thin that he hardly had strength to crawl, and he had several narrow escapes from falling a prey to ferocious beasts. One night, he came to a house and begged a morsel of food. It was given and during the night he woke the man and warned him that wild animals were making a raid. The man jumped up, seized his bow and arrow, and drove the thieves away. Then he patted the dog. Good dog, he said. You are a wise animal. Stay with me always. You will find Father Adam kind. Father Adam, cried the dog in alarm. I must not stay here. Nonsense. I say you must, answered Adam and the dog was compelled to obey. In the morning, the cat learned that the dog had joined the household, and she complained to Adam. The dog has violated the oath he swore not to come to the place where I am, she said. He did not know you were here, said Adam, desirous of maintaining peace. He is very useful. I want him to remain, but he won't hurt you. There's ample room for both. No, there isn't, said the cat spitefully, arching her back and getting cross. He broke his oath. He is a wicked creature. You dare not overlook his offense. The poor dog stood dejectedly apart, with his tail between his legs. I didn't know it was Adam's house, and I was so hungry and miserable and tired, he said. But the cat would not be pacified. She thrust out her ugly claws and tried to scratch her former partner. The dog kept out of her way as much as possible, but she quarreled with him at every opportunity, and at last he determined to tolerate her conduct no longer. I must leave you, Father Adam, he said. The cat is making my life unbearable. But I want you, said Adam. I am sorry, said the dog, firmly. But it is really impossible for me to continue in your service. I've got another situation at the house of Seth. He wants me too. Won't you make friends with the cat? said Adam. With pleasure, if she will let me, but she won't. You blame each other, said Adam, losing patience. I can't make you out. You look like quarreling forever. Adam's words have proven true. Ever since that time, the cat and dog have failed to agree. The cat will never consent to being friendly against the dog. Thank you all for listening. I did have to change one of the words, well, more of two of the words in this story, because I don't think YouTube will let me say those words. So if you want to check out the link in the description to see what was used instead of the cat and the dog, please be my guest. I do hope you enjoyed the story and I hope you have a wonderful day.